Well, welcome to our morning prayer for this fifth Sunday of Easter, um, 2nd of May, Bank Holiday Weekend. Although we can't be together physically, we can join together in this simple act of worship and we are united in our prayers by God's Holy Spirit. Welcome, particularly welcome if you're watching this on your own or socially isolating, and especially welcome to any children and teens watching. We begin with the ancient Christian response. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So this is the season when we reflect on our Lord Jesus Christ passing from death to life. Throughout the world, Christians are celebrating the awesome power of God. As we hear and proclaim all that God has done, we can be confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever. Today we reflect on Jesus' invite to abide in me. So I've lit, in, lit our Easter candle and we pray. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ bless you this Easter season. Thanks be to God. Amen. We come to our confession. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors were afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our praise today is brought to us by Psalm 22, verses 25 to 31. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. I will perform my vows in the presence of those that fear you. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise him. Their hearts shall live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nation shall bow before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he rules over the nations. How can those who sleep in the earth bow down in worship? Or those who go down to the dust kneel before him? He has saved my life for himself. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be told of the Lord for generations to come. They shall come and make known his salvation to a people yet unborn, declaring that he, the Lord, has done it. Our Gospel reading is from John 15, verse 1 to 8. I am the true vine. And my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You've already been cleansed by the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I'm the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So in the classic uh, John le Carre um, spy novel, which was also turned into a film and a great TV series, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, there is a deadly hunt for a double agent. A double agent who appears loyal to the team but is actually feeding secrets directly to the enemy. 
double agents were not new in the Cold War, but happened in Jesus' time. In the Middle East, there was a special word for someone who appears part of one court and then goes and feeds secret information to another. They are called a Satan. Why mention this? Well, the context in John's Gospel of chapter 15 is one where Judas has gone off into the night. He is no longer abiding with Jesus. He is going to the court of the Pharisees, acting as a Satan, a double agent. Jesus invites his disciples to remain in him. Allow his words to sink in deep. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Parts of a vine that bear no fruit are cut off and burnt up. Exactly what happens to faithful Judas after his devastating choice. Why did Jesus reference a vine and why is it so resonant? Israel has always been a land of vineyards and travel through the central hill, hill country of Israel in the right season and there are many fruitful vines. Perhaps it's not surprising that the vine, so characteristic of the, na the country's agricultural fertility, um, serves as a potent image for the land itself. During the Jewish uprising, what did the Maccabeans choose to place on their minted coin? What was the national symbol of choice? What adorned the front of the holy place in the temple, one of the glories of the temple, a vine. Isaiah 5, yet I planted you a choice vine. Hosea, Israel is a luxuriant vine. Psalm 80, the psalmist sings, thou didst bring a vine out of Egypt. So into that exact context, Jesus says, I am the true vine. The vine is a great choice. It's utilitarian. It exists to produce grapes. Its flowers are fairly insignificant. When it's cropped to fruit, it's severely pruned to bear fruit next season. The New Testament continues the, the use of the vineyard theme that began in the Old Testament with a twist. It is no longer ethnic Israel that's God's vineyard but the kingdom of God. This can be seen in parables of, of the vineyard in Matthew, the parable of the tenants in uh, Matthew 21. And it has a, a close similarity to Isaiah 5. The landowner who has got to be God plants and protects a vineyard and then rents it to tenants who end up abusing his servants. The parable concludes with a threat against those who misuse the vineyard. The, the most striking of all the New Testament uses of the image comes here in John 15. Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he proclaims, I am the vine, you are the branches. By identifying himself as the vine, Jesus claims participation in the kingdom is possible for those who remain in him. Those disciples who do will bear much fruit. So in the light of this, it's then fitting that the ritual of the Last Supper that Jesus institutes on the eve of his death involves the drinking of the fruit of the vine. By keeping this command to remember, what are we doing? Realigning in him. So that's the context. We appreciate the symbolism of the vine. How do we do it? So secondly, what should... Jesus disciples be doing? How do we remain joined to Jesus, the true vine, and bear good fruit? Jesus is asking his disciples to gain all their nutrients from him, the vine. Apart from him, we can do nothing. Our efforts are, are fruitless. So how do we work and remain within Jesus? We need to remain connected to Jesus, um, understanding the actual word remain helps us. As well as remain, it can also be translated as abide or dwell. 
and it's the verb form of dwelling place. In the Old Testament, God has promised to dwell with his obedient covenant people always. What's a way for us Christians to remain in Jesus? In the same way as God dwelt with the obedient Israelites of the Old Covenant, we Christians need to be obedient to the New Covenant. That New Covenant is one we make directly to God through Jesus. Jesus says in verse 7, If you remain in me, my words remain in you. Notice the use of the word remain. If you remain in me, my words remain in you. We need to be meditating on Jesus' words, reading his words in scripture. Like Jesus, we need to delight to do the will of the Father. Therefore, the Christian life is one of devotion to Christ, to his words, his teaching and to his commands. Verse 12, if you love me, you will obey my commands. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. You are my friends if you do what I command. So following his words, following his commands, letting them seep into us are about abiding in Jesus. A poem to end called Abide. To abide is to stop. A response to an invitation, a letting go of self and allowing of love. The island joins the continent. The resource is not yours alone. There is a giving up, a dropping of fists. To abide is to be held, a place where striving cease. The elixir of peace, rest for the restless soul, the dove's nest. The heart's rest, the Nazarene vine, an invite divine. Come to our prayers. First prayer is taken from uh, a Mennonite prayer. God of love, plant us in the soil of your grace. Nurture us with the strength of Christ, the vine of everlasting life. Enlighten us with the wisdom of your spirit, which flows through us today and all days. Abide in us, that we may abide in you, and live in your love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, at a meal table from which you were betrayed, you offered a meal of everlasting life. Help us to be drawn into your love. Help us to not surrender to that which is any less. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you invite us to abide in you. Help us as your church to be united in your love. Lord, we pray for all who work in public life who seek to bring communities together. We lift to you our local elections and the upheaval in Northern Ireland. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, your care for others remain constant. We lift to you those who are grieving and unwell. We offer their minds, bodies and spirits to you. We remember the nation of India with its current pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today's Collect Risen Christ, your wombs declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Please feel free to join in. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And a closing prayer and blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him and in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. So every blessing as you abide in Christ.